we're going to take a look at the programming software on the Vertex Standard VX 1700. I've managed to download the uh, appropriate software. I'll uh, leave a link in the uh, video description to the software if it's of use to anyone. This is the only source I could find that was freely available. I think there may be a, a more modern version of this software out there, but this is the one I could find. Um, Chems has a, a zip file. I've extracted it to a directory on my PC. It's one of these um, applications that doesn't install as such. It just uh, sort of sits there in the directory. And when you start it up, which I'll do now, I'll just put that fully in the, uh, the screen. Uh, this is what you get. Okay, so the next step, we've got the VX1700 uh, plugged in with its programming lead into a USB on the machine I'm using here. Um, bear in mind that the programming lead actually connects into the tuner port, strangely enough, on the back of the VX1700. That foxed me initially, but it goes into the tuner port. And now I need to turn on the VX1700, but to put it into programming uh, mode, I need to press the enter key and the nine key as I power it up and you'll see on the display what you'll get. So just stand by while I power it up. Okay, and we can see now we've got a clone F send on the display. So it's in programming mode. So on our software, if we go over to the menu item labeled radio and we click on upload, okay, uh, it just tells us now that we need to press the F button on the transceiver, so we'll do that. And the upload allows the programming from the transceiver to um, be sent to the PC. It's kind of the opposite way around to how I would see it, but that's the terminology they use. Um, now we've got up to 200 memories we can use on this radio. I don't always think memories are particularly useful on an HF transceiver, but if you want them, they're there. I put a, a few entries in earlier just to uh, just to try it out really. Um, what I'm particularly interested in with this is the uh, the four programmable keys. Uh, you can see there at the bottom right of the radio, just next to the uh, the squelch knob there. They're labelled F1 to uh, F4, or rather, they're labelled P1 to P4. And if we go to the common menu item and we go to key function this is where we can allocate a function to these keys you'll see that I've set um, p1 for 1 megahertz up and p3 which is below p1 for 1 megahertz down so I can step up and down the bands quite easily and the remaining uh, two keys uh, I've set one to uh, RF power selection. You've got three power settings on the radio, low, mid, and high. I've got P4 at the moment set to Vox, but I'll just drop down on this, and you can see the options that we have uh, that we can allocate to um, to the keys. We can have a clarifier function, dual watch, encryption, lock, monitor. Um, RF power selection and so on okay so we've got a, a limited but useful um, number of functions I'll put it back to Vox um, the PU stroke D I believe represents the two keys um, just below the display. You can see in the picture there between the two larger of the knobs, the volume knob and the tuning knob, there's two press buttons there. Um, you're very limited as what you can program those two. Um, the up down seems to just switch between the various memory modes. I didn't find that setting very useful, so I've left it on 2182 alarm. 
the not keys that I use at the moment so I'll just leave them there for now so those are the four programmable buttons and I see you've got an option for those two keys in the middle but I'm not quite sure what that up down is meant to achieve some of the other useful settings here um, if you're using um, a Kia CW Kia you can set some of the uh, functions for CW here you can actually uh, set the power levels you want uh, here you'll see the radius capable of 125 watts out up to 4 megahertz and that drops to 100 watts out uh, above 4 you can set the intensity of the uh, dimmer the LED display or the LED backlighting from 10 to off so I've just got uh, 10 as high and uh, 5 as low um, and you could actually um, set it it looks like to drop out after after 10 seconds but we'll just leave it on okay various settings in the miscellaneous we can set the uh, beep tone volume dual watch mode lock mode scanning modes we can set up the uh, the vox in this um, menu item as well this radio appears to have an ALE -A -L -E option fitted I need to look into that I think that's there are some uses for this in amateur radio I think it's a kind of a marine system but that's something we need to look into and that's pretty much it um, so what those it just gives you the serial number of the radio there so pretty much it I think um, you can split the channels between banks I've got all of mine in bank one but I'm not likely to use 200 channels on an HF radio anyway um, cell call settings well again this is for the commercial use they're there not going to have any use for them in, um, in amateur radio and we've got uh, the ale settings here um, the board is switched off for the moment but I believe this radio does have the ale uh, board in it so that's basically it um, if we now wanted to program more channels back into the radio we can um, put an extra one here if you like and we'll just set this for um, the um, FT8 channel on um, 10 meters okay and uh, leave that in USB mode we probably want to run FT8 on low power so we've added an extra channel and we could put a tag in here I don't know what the limitations are on that can we actually Oh, yeah. can we tag that up as FT8 I don't know let's put a dash in there yeah okay so go to radio we go to download click on OK you can see it's now loading the information back onto the radio that's OK and uh, now we've now got the radio back in its normal function we'll just check the uh, the memory settings okay and I see that um, the tag that I set that says FT8 is not there so maybe I have to change that to uh, to tag I'm guessing if I did that that is all I would have 
in the display so it wouldn't very, be very useful I'd have to change that to um, don't know how many characters we've got to play with here not enough I don't think uh, we could do it that way let's try that let's put the radio back into uh, programming mode Okay, and uh, let's send that back up the line. All right, so we've done again. Let's have a look at the memory now. Okay, so there we are. So we get the tag. So um, that could be quite useful if you're using this rig for data, I guess. Okay, I hope that was of some use. It's my first uh, try at uh, programming the VX1700. And see, there's not an awful lot you can do with it other than those uh, four programmable keys and um, the memories. Um, possibly if you're going to use the radio for certain purposes the memories would be very useful I'm thinking of 60 meters UK operation actually I could program those channels in because they are set uh, channels um, if somebody wanted to use it for 27 megs which of course would not be legal in the UK but you could certainly program um, uh, CB channels into it bearing in mind that um, this radio has no FM, but it would be fine for AM and SSB. But this is where it really shows its um, its commercial origins, because I think most of these, if they were used as marine radios, would be permanently in channel mode, um, and there'd be no way of uh, of using a VFO. Anyway, there it is. That's the VX1700 software. It's called CE77. It is downloadable. Programming leads are easily available. I believe they're the same um, same leads that suit the um, Yesu FT857, amongst others. So they're quite cheaply available too. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.